Give to the winds. Give to the winds your fears. In hope, be undismayed. Give to the winds, give to the winds your fears. Well, good morning, Lakeside friends and family. We're so glad that we're able to worship and be together this morning uh, via technology. We're certainly appreciative of Bill and and his ability to produce this thing and to get us out there and, and just have all of us be able to share in, in worship service together. Thank you for everyone that uh, has a part to play in doing this. Just a few quick announcements today. Uh, we're just uh, keeping you posted on our current situation. We're working on some plans. I've had an idea of how we can get a few people uh, back into church. So within the next couple of weeks, I'll be making some announcements on that. We do need to do a little testing on that. But uh, just keep your eyes and ears peeled for the announcements of how we may be able to start bringing some folks back in for uh, in-church worship service with us uh, on Saturday. So it's going to be a Saturday service. That's when we record this. A lot of people say, wow, I thought it was live on Sunday. But no, we record on Saturday and get all the elements put together for the worship. So there's going to be an upcoming announcement on that, I hope, within a couple of weeks. So just uh, be aware of that and uh, maybe start making some plans in the back of your head for that as well. So we're grateful that you're with us this morning. It's so good to have you. If you're a first-time viewer with us today, I just pray that you are blessed by uh, the scripture today and the, and the story of Peter. We're going to talk about Peter and getting out of the boat is not the problem. It's staying on top of the water and staying above our problems with Jesus is always there to rescue us. So just uh, just be prepared today for a message about uh, getting out of the boat. That's what we're called to do. But if you're a first time viewer, I invite you uh, when we are able to come back to church that you would come and check us out and be a part of our worship and our family here at Lakeside. I just wanna thank everyone again for their continued financial support. We're, we're hanging in there and we're able to pay the bill. So I just wanna thank everyone that's so uh, just taking care of their stewardship of the church and, and supporting us with their tithes and offerings. We just thank you and I'm so grateful uh, that you continue to be faithful to Lakeside. So thank you for that. A reminder that PayPal is an option on our website. So if you are more comfortable with that and it's more convenient, I hope that you would be able to, to use PayPal uh, for your tithes and offerings. And any, uh, any donations to the church, I'll mention again, Karen Snyder, uh, her husband asked that uh, 
friends and family have asked where they could make donations. So uh, we've, we've put out word that they could use PayPal on the website as well. So if you're uh, wanting to make a, a donation in memory of Karen, you can certainly do it on PayPal or just send it to the church as you normally would. Just mark on your checks uh, that it's in memory of Karen Snyder. There's still a lot going on in the life of your church. Let's pray and worship together today. Let's now prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Join us for our call to worship. Jesus walks to us over the water. Call to us, Lord. We long to be with you. Jesus calls to us. Come, do not be afraid. Save us, Lord. We're sinking. Jesus saves us from our fears. God delivers us from the storm. Thanks be to God. And now join us for the singing of our opening hymn. even our worst moments into possibilities for good. God can transform even our worst experiences into opportunities for grace. Will you pray with me? Eternal God, you visit us in dreams, offering us glimpses of new possibilities. Rescue us from life's storms and lift us from the raging waters. Be with us now as we call on your name. Reveal your purposes for our world that we may be of use and service. Bless us with the courage to spread your word, that it may be said of us, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now it's the time in our service when we go to the Lord in prayer. We have these concerns to lift up this morning. I've got a great news. We've got a thank you card from Devin Snyder last Sunday. Uh, some of us, we had probably maybe 12 or 15 uh, carloads of folks that went by and did a drive-by uh, birthday greeting. Last Sunday was Devin's 14th birthday, and he sent us a great little thank you card. And we're just grateful that it touched his heart uh, to let him know that his church family loves him. So continue to pray for for Devin and David as they uh, deal and deal with the loss of Karen 
and we just pray for all of their family and friends that miss her so much. She was a great lady. Further prayer concerns this morning, of course, we lift up our police and our military personnel uh, protecting us and keeping us safe during these uncertain times for sure. Uh, we lift up those who have suffered under COVID-19, the deaths and the families affected uh, through the passing of, of folks due to COVID. Or COVID and uh, I just pray that uh, they feel God's love uh, during these most difficult times as well. And we lift up all our health care workers and first responders. Uh, they are just continuing to do a great work and, and so many places now are calling for reinforcements for doctors and nurses to come and, and help out in areas we just pray for all of those that are leaving their families and going uh, to new cities and new areas of the country uh, to help out with this pandemic. So God bless them and, and just protect them and keep them safe. Those on our cancer list today, we've got some updates on that as well. Marilyn Tilly, I've been in conversation with her for the last couple of weeks and she's gotten some troubling news that the cancer seems now through an MRI to be uh, spread to her spine and invasion of some uh, bone uh, areas of bone so she is going to undergo some new therapy treatments and she's continuing to fight uh, this evil cancer that she's uh, she's just been fighting for so long her prayer though is as usual not so much for herself she's got such a great strong faith and she knows the lord is carrying her through this but provisions for her sister nancy she knows that nancy will need somebody to help with her and to take care of her and uh, we just pray for a provision for, for Nancy, her sister. So keep that family in your prayers, Marilyn and Nancy. Uh, those others on our cancer list, Sandy Scoville, April Abercrombie, Elizabeth Merchant, we've got an update on her as well. She's finished her chemo treatments and the cancer has shrunk enough uh, to allow them to do surgery. She's got it in the colon and in the, uh, in the ovary as well. So she's having surgery on August 24th and she's very grateful uh, for our prayers and she knows that, uh, that her, this church family here is praying for her. If you don't know who that is, she's a, uh, a co-worker of Nancy, my wife Nancy, and uh, she worked at PBA, but now she's uh, not able to work anymore, but just continue to lift Elizabeth up. Uh, Kelly Norman as well, she's doing a little better. Our friend Kelly Baker in Georgia, uh, she's a She's down to about three more treatments this past week. She was not able to have her treatment because her blood counts were uh, too low. So just continue to pray for Kelly and Mike Baker and their family. Uh, Larry Koontzman, we were in contact with Larry this week. Larry's not doing very well. He's on, in severe pain and he's still at the VA hospital. So Larry's really struggling with his health. I just ask that you would continue, uh, obviously, to pray for Larry. Uh, Lane Laubscher as well, we continue to pray for Lane. Uh, other health concerns, we are still, I've heard from, uh, talked with, uh, spoke with Charlotte Holloway, and uh, she's doing better after her leg surgery, so she's on the road to recovery, just praise for that. Albert Jordan is still suffering from, uh, from some health issues. Sadak Along, a friend of Terry Browning, who still uh, is recovering from COVID-19. Ken Friend uh, has got some health and heart issues, so we continue to lift uh, Ken up. Wanda Laubscher with lupus complications. Uh, Beverly Engler, Mary Ann Davis, and John Meyer. Uh, update on John, I spoke with, uh, with Sheila Meyer, her, uh, his wife, uh, this week, and uh, she informed me that John now has gone under hospice care, that he's really deteriorating quickly. So just keep that family. And further uh, news on that family, their daughter, daughter-in-law and son, uh, the daughter-in-law is pregnant and they've been diagnosed now with COVID-19 so they are struggling with that. Uh, their daughter-in-law uh, has uh, is pregnant and will be delivering a baby shortly so we're just praying for that family and she informed me that two other members so four members of that family have been diagnosed uh, with COVID-19 so just pray for them and uh, for that family. Carl Linderson spoke with Carl this week uh, he's really struggling with his Meniere's disease and vertigo and is very dizzy, so just keep uh, praying for Carl. Earl Fields is uh, continuing in his failing health. Uh, his son Darren is a member of our church here, is his caregiver. They live here near the church, but just lift that family up and, and for Earl and uh, for his health and, and for his stability because he's really starting to fail. Continue to pray for Don Morphesis. And Vinny Manna, Vinny is uh, slowly improving with his hip situation. He's still undergoing treatments for that. 
Uh, and like I said, David and Devin Snyder, we just uh, continue to pray for them. And we're grateful that uh, the church has really reached out to support them. Thank you for everyone that, uh, that put that together last Sunday. Uh, hospice care, Mary Ann Gill. And as far as I know, uh, it's been a while since I've spoken with her son, uh, that she's still hanging in there and doing well. She's at V at Lakeside. So, uh, so many on our list today. Uh, if you have someone, now's the time bring that before God. Let us prepare our hearts now for prayer this morning. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we have gathered in solitude again this morning but we're never alone the Holy Spirit has come into this place before we ever arrived this morning and has prepared it and has sanctified it for the loving worship of our Savior Jesus Christ father thank you for the blessings of this day so many things we have to be grateful for Lord we never want to forget the provision you've made for us and even in our isolation and loneliness through this pandemic Father, I pray that we feel the Holy Spirit keeping us company and comforting us during these crazy and uncertain times. Father, we've lifted those folks by name this morning, but many more reside in our hearts that have gone unspoken today, but you know who they are. Father, I pray for each one mentioned here by name and the health concerns that were mentioned for them and for those that are taking care of them, caregivers at home, our health care workers, First responders, Lord, as they answer the call each time to minister and to, and to help uh, take care of these folks. So, Father, I just pray a blessing on all that are suffering this morning. Father, I pray that you would protect us and guide us and lead us. Father, all we have is our faith. Everything else of man can crumble before our eyes. But, Father... You are steadfast and never fail us. So, Father, today I ask your blessing on all that are gathered in their homes this morning and wherever they may be viewing this message today. Father, thank you for loving us and allowing us to love you. Even when we fall short, Lord, your love is still steadfast. So, Father, we're grateful. I pray for our nation today, Lord as we're edging ever closer to election day, I pray that your will will be done and that the proper people are allowed to serve this nation and lead us. So, Father, thank you for providing for us in that way. Father, we love you today. So much going on in our world, so many areas that seem just completely out of our control. But, Father, today we know who is in charge. It's not man, it's not our leaders, it's ultimately you that decide our fate. So Father, let us be faithful to you. Let us not turn from you and create our own destiny. Let our destiny be in you. So Father, I ask your blessing upon us today as we share the Lord's Prayer. Please pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
This morning I would like to read from the Old Testament. I'm going to be reading um, Psalm 1, 1, 1. Um, To me it's a very comforting psalm and it's putting all my trust in the Lord. Please hear these words. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him. He remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are steadfast forever and ever, done in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Will you please join me now in the invitation to the offering? God has blessed us with the gift of life. For the blessings that come in our lives, let us offer our thanks and show our gratitude to God through today's offering. Let us pray. Loving God, your mercies know no bounds. Though his brothers threw him into a pit and sold him into slavery, Joseph remained faithful. Though his feet were bound with chains and his neck with a collar of iron, Joseph placed his fate in your hands. May our lives reflect this same devotion in all our endeavors. And may our offerings be a sign of of our faithfulness to you. Father, we're grateful for our Savior and Deliverer, Jesus Christ. It's in his name that I pray. Amen and amen. We're continuing our scripture reading in the book of Matthew. Our verses this morning are Matthew 14, 22 through 33. Hear these words. Right then, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side of the lake while he dismissed the crowds. When he sent them away, he went up onto a mountain by himself to pray. Evening came and he was alone. Meanwhile, the boat, fighting a strong headwind, was being battered by the waves and was already far from land. Very early in the morning, he came to his disciples walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost! They were so frightened, they screamed. Just then, Jesus spoke to them, Be encouraged, it's me! Don't be afraid! Peter replied, Lord, if it's you, order me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. Then Peter got out of the boat and was walking on the water towards Jesus. But when Peter saw the strong wind, he became frightened. As he began to sink, he shouted, Lord, rescue me. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him, saying, You man of weak faith, why did you begin to have doubts? When they got into the boat, the wind settled down. Then those in the boat were, then those in the boat worshiped Jesus and said, you must be God's son. Amen 
May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of this scripture this morning. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for these powerful words. Like Peter, we're often willing to get out of the boat, but our faith wavers and we stumble. Father, I pray today for strength in our faith and to be forever mindful that Jesus Christ has a hand to reach out to us. Thank you, Jesus. It's in his holy and precious name that I pray. Amen. You saw the image today of Jesus walking on the lake. And what were the disciples' first response to seeing Jesus on the water? They were terrified and said it must be a ghost. They were so frightened, they screamed. I love that translation from the Common English Bible this morning. They were so frightened, they screamed. And then Jesus spoke to them. Be encouraged, it's me. Don't be afraid. How many times in our day-to-day -day life do we just need to hear Jesus say, Don't be afraid, it's me. And then Jesus spoke to them. Be encouraged. I pray this morning that you're encouraged. No matter what is happening in your life, be like Peter. You know, verse 28 said, Peter replied, Lord, if it's you, order me to come to you on the water. Peter was willing and able and then Jesus says, simply, come. Come, Peter. And Peter got out of the boat. Peter was willing to get out of the boat. And he was walking on the water towards Jesus. But what happened then? Peter looks down. He sees the sea swirling. The wind is blowing. He becomes frightened again. He didn't think he could make it. And what happens? He begins to sink. And what does Peter do? Thank goodness, Peter's response was, Lord, rescue me. Many times in our life, we need to yell out, scream, even in anger, in frustration, Lord, rescue me. And I love this. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him, saying, You man of weak faith, why did you begin to have doubts? You had it going on. You were walking on water. But your faith stumbled. And you began to sink. You know, one of the most astonishing sentences in the whole Bible is Matthew 14, 28. When Peter said, Lord, if it's you, order me to come to you on the water. Lord, if it's you, order me to get out of the boat. And Peter obeyed. I pray this morning that we are willing to get out of the boat. And Peter actually walked on water. Forever briefly as it might have been, the only human to have accomplished such a feat without some magic. Peter, at God's command, at Jesus' words of encouragement, said, Peter, come. And he got out of the boat. Now here's where Peter's a lot like you and me. He had good days, bad days, ugly moments in his life and in his ministry. We're familiar with them. And Peter's life reflects that of many disciples today. Many of us struggle with the same things Peter did. You know Peter, he'd grab a sword and lop off someone's ear. And Jesus would have to fix his messes. We need Jesus for the same purposes that Peter did. We see this encounter in Luke of one morning Jesus met them. Early, the fishermen were out washing their nets and preparing for the next day's fishing. And he comes upon this motley crew of fishermen. A night that they hadn't caught a thing. Their efforts were fruitless. Nothing happened that night. And you can actually hear the frustration and heartbreak in their voices. In Luke 5, 5, it says, when Jesus came upon them, you know the command, get back in your boats. And Jesus said to them, Master, we've worked hard all night and caught nothing. How many of us has labored just so much and we're wore out and we're spent? There's nothing left to give. And we say we've done all we can. Peter's voice that night was a voice of a broken businessman. Frustrations and failures surround us. 
And Peter had it, the fear of not measuring up to the standard that our society plagues us with. Our daily thoughts are, how are we going to ever succeed and flourish? I've got some good news today. Jesus feels our frustration. He hears our heartbreak and is ready to help us if we just follow his advice. If we just follow Jesus. It was at this lake of Gennesaret that Peter had a life-changing encounter with Jesus. It's where Peter, Simon Peter, it's where his life would have changed, had changed forever. You know the story. He loaned Jesus his boat. He loaned Jesus the boat to preach the gospel. And what happened? He got a great turnaround in his business. He followed Jesus. He obeyed Jesus' command to launch into the deep. After that frustrating night, we knew that he didn't catch a thing. But Jesus said, try one more time. Go out and throw your net. And it was a record-breaking catch that night. The greatest Peter had ever experienced as a fisherman. Luke 5 tells us. When he finished speaking to the crowds, he said to Simon, row out farther into the deep water and drop your nets for a catch. Simon replied, Master, we've worked hard all night and caught nothing. But because you say so, I'll drop the nets. So they dropped the nets and their catch was so huge that their nets were splitting. They signaled for the partners and other boats to come and help them. They filled both boats so full that they were about to sink. See God's provision. The fish were more than they could even handle. He was so astonished that he fell at the feet of Jesus and confessed. Simon Peter confessed that night at Jesus' feet. And, she, and Peter said, leave me, Lord, for I'm a sinner. Peter knew his shortcomings. And he knew Jesus shouldn't have anything to do with him. But Jesus did. Jesus responded and said in Luke 5.10, James and John, Zebedee's son, were Simon's partners. And they were amazed too in what Jesus had to say. Don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. Here's the most astonishing part. After the most successful evening of fishing, what do they do? Peter and his crew left everything. And from that day forward, they were Jesus' disciples. Now the tough questions for us. Have we ever had, have you, not we, have you ever had an encounter with Jesus? Has Jesus ever met you on the shores of a lake or in your living room? or in your workplace, or wherever you need Him to meet you? Have you confessed your sins to Him? Have you said, Lord, I am not worthy, leave me? And He never will. He will always be there. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. He's ready to receive and turn things around in your life, in your business, in your relationships, in your finances. Jesus is there. I don't know what was in Peter's mind that night in Matthew 14 from our scripture and 28 says, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus says, Peter, get out of the boat. It's okay. You'll be fine. And Peter hopped out. You can do it, Jesus said. I know you can. And Peter stepped out of the boat and he walked on water. Folks, I've never walked on water. I know a lot of you are good people, but I doubt if you've ever walked on water. But Jesus says, get out of the boat and keep your faith in me and you will be strong. In Matthew 14, 24, we hear that the ship was being tossed about in the sea. It was an awful night. Wind and waves. It was stormy. The conditions were horrible. And Peter stepped into the sea. But, don't you hate it? There always seems to be a but. And when Peter saw that the wind was just unbelievable and the seas raged, he was afraid. And when Peter was afraid, he began to sink. And what did he say? 
He cried out, Lord, save me. Peter doubted. And he started sinking. But Jesus was there to save him. I ask you this morning, how many times have you, have I, have we doubted and taken our eyes off Jesus and focused on our own problems? So many times, that's true, even for me. I'm no better than you or anyone else. Sometimes I lose my focus on Jesus. I lose focus on our problems and I seek human help, not God's help. We are like Peter in that. But God gave us grace through Jesus. This was the same Peter that he was the one that declared with the help of the Father that Jesus was the Christ. The Lord declared to Matthew, I tell you that you are Peter and I'll build my church on this rock. The gates of the underworld won't be able to stand against it. Peter was to be that first person in the church to bring the people hope after Jesus. He was the one. He even used Peter. Can you believe it? Peter was as messed up as you and I. And God chose to use him. The church of Christ is built upon Peter's declaration. This was the same Peter. You know the story. He boldly declared that he will never deny Jesus. But he ended up denying Jesus three times and cried bitterly after what Jesus told him would come to pass in John 18. Peter said, I'll never leave you, Lord. How many times have we preached to others or gave others advice in the name of Jesus Christ and then denied him with our own words and actions? Folks, we do it too. Peter does not stand alone here. We pledge to do God's work, but give excuses when we're supposed to be at our duty post. We are like Peter. When we are called to stand watch, to be the guard, we fall asleep. This same Peter, after the death and resurrection of Jesus, declared to the other apostles in John 21, when they thought all lost was, when all hope was lost, at the crucifixion. What did Simon Peter do? He told the gang, I'm going fishing. I have a feeling his luck would be about the way it was before Jesus came and interceded on their behalf. And what did the disciples say? We'll go with you. Peter led them, but in the wrong direction. They set out in a boat. But throughout the night, they caught nothing. They abandoned the work that Jesus gave them to be fishers of men. And they returned to their former business. And it was no better for them then than it was in the beginning. The sad part is Peter took other disciples with him. He didn't only leave Jesus' work. He took others with him. One of my most memorable places is standing on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. At Peter's Primacy, there's a church there in the Holy Land where Jesus was on the shore cooking over a fire and the fishermen had been out and nothing. And Jesus motioned for them to come ashore. That's a powerful place. When I stood there in that spot, I could feel Jesus' presence. And once again, Jesus had to intervene. You know the story. Three times he asked Peter this question in John 21. When they finished eating, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Simon replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. Then Jesus asked a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Simon replied, yes, Lord, of course. Lord, you know I love you. And Jesus replied, Take care of my sheep. Then he asked a third time of Simon. Simon, son of John, do you love me? By this time, Peter was just distraught. He was so sad that Jesus asked him a third time. Now you know the reasoning behind these three questions. Peter denied Jesus three times on that night. 
And Jesus asked a third time, do you love me? Peter replied, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. How many times have you, have I, abandoned God's work and concentrated solely on our own work, solely on our own business, to the detriment of God's business? How many times have you and I done that? How many times have we been a Simon Peter? So this leads me to ask, you knew the questions were coming. And this is for you and for me. How is your prayer life? Are you praying when you should? Are you lifting things to God that needs to be in God's hands? I ask you, how is your prayer life? I ask you, and I'm using this word because it's very important and it scares people to death. How is your evangelism to others? Are you talking to others? I know you're isolated. You have a telephone, I'm sure. If need be, you've got a, a pencil and paper. And I hope you have a stamp. You can send a card or a short note encouraging someone. Your evangelism. Have you thought of yourselves as an evangelist? You are. You are an evangelist. And this third question. This is one that I say haunts me. How about your commitments you've made to Christ? I have made many commitments to Christ. I pray that I'm able to follow them and live up to my end of the bargain. But I know as a sinner and as a fallen person in this world, I sometimes fall short. I don't live up to my commitments that I should. Now, I don't know about you, but we can be feeling a little nervous and jittery right now. We've been pressed. We've got our backs against the wall. But Simon Peter's going to take the pressure off. Let's take the spotlight off of us for a moment and get back to good old Simon Peter. You know, this same Simon Peter, after Jesus' ascension and the baptism by the Holy Spirit, stood before thousands, administered the gospel so persuasively and so powerfully that 3,000 souls were saved that day. Acts 2. 3,000 people heard the word. And 3,000 souls were saved that day. You know the story, Peter and John. They healed a 40-year-old man. He was born lame. And this led to an awful uproar. And a powerful message that won 5,000 souls for the kingdom of God. 5,000 on that day. Acts 3 tells us that they were thrown in jail. But Peter remained bold. He preached the gospel in jail. He continued preaching the word of life despite the threats upon him. King Herod threw him in prison. And he was all set to be killed. But what happened? He didn't even lose sleep over it. He slept like a baby. And in the night in Acts 12 it says, An angel came and rescued him. Peter was all in. Peter never gave up on the gospel. This is the same Peter who couldn't heal his mother-in-law when she had a fever. But then he raised the dead, Tabitha, Dorcas in the Bible. And we hear in Acts 5 that just Peter's shadow passing along the street were healing people. If his shadow fell upon someone that was sick, they were made well. He was used mightily by God to take the gospel to the Jews and the Gentiles. Sure, Peter made mistakes. He failed many, he failed many times. And his weaknesses were very evident for the whole world to see. We still talk about his weaknesses today, sometimes in more reverence than what he did for the gospel. Because we see ourselves in Peter's failures. We see ourselves in Peter's failures. But through it all, and with the help of Jesus and the Holy Spirit, he fulfilled his destiny. I'm calling to you this morning and asking you, have you fulfilled your destiny? 
Have you answered God's call and been committed to the call you've accepted? Maybe you haven't accepted the call. It's high time you did. We all make mistakes. We all fail sometimes. But we have the ability to do greater works than we ever imagined. Jesus himself said, they will do greater things than I ever did. And we know what Jesus did. We're blessed to know that the Lord has promised that he will never leave us nor forsake us. He says in Matthew 28, 20, I am with you always, even unto the end of this present age. So this morning, folks, you may be feeling isolated. You may be feeling rejected. You may be feeling lonely. But I'm telling you, Jesus Christ sits there beside you. And he's urging you to get out of the boat, to stand up, walk on the water, give it a shot. When Jesus Christ leads you, you can do anything. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you so much for this amazing story of Simon Peter. Father, our willingness to get out of the boat and jump out into the water sometimes is just a precursor to how great you are in our lives. But Father, when we begin to doubt, when we look down and see how rough the water is or how much the wind is blowing, we lose faith and we sink into the abyss. I pray this morning that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit would get us out of the boat and the Holy Spirit would encourage us to walk on the water. Father, thank you. It's in the holy and precious name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, that I pray. Amen and amen. And now let us join together for our closing hymn. Peter's called us out of the boat. Actually, Jesus has. But as Peter's contention with Jesus, he got out of the boat.
So today I'm asking you, as we serve a risen God, that we're encouraged to know that Jesus goes with us. Hear these words. God blesses us with the strength for the journey. Our hearts sing God's praises. Christ lifts us up from the raging waters of life. Our spirits rejoice in our salvation. The Spirit guides us with dreams full of hope and promise. Our lives rest, our lives rest secure in the one who is faithful. Thanks be to God. God bless you all.